Just mention the words belly dancing in mixed company and you'll get a very wide range of reactions. There'll be plenty of sniggers as folk think of the curvaceous, sultry, matahari type temptresses of Hollywood movies. But in the real world of belly dancing, things are very different. Today, belly dancing is steadily growing in popularity practiced by everyone from tiny tots to great-great-grandmothers, and women everywhere are catching on to the benefits of this wonderful, stress-busting taste of tantalizing Eastern promise. Belly dancing is not only a great way to keep physically fit, but it can also be very relaxing. And one of the best things about it is that it helps to promote a positive body image. Rather than encouraging you to be supermodel thin, the art of belly dancing celebrates the more natural, curvaceous feminine forms, regardless of size or shape. With this in mind, this programme is designed so that it's quick and easy to follow, and by the end of it, you should be able to dance with confidence. In the form of a step-by-step -step guide, it'll take you right through from getting started to giving you advice on performing and creating your own routines. And with the help of our very own belly dancer, it'll demonstrate clearly various dance moves that'll help you on your way to becoming an accomplished belly dancer. But before we go any further, let's look at where belly dancing comes from and why it's seen as being both feminine and exotic. Far from being a relatively new art form, the roots of belly dancing can be traced back to early pagan cultures that worshipped goddesses and gave women a high status because of their ability to give birth. Historical evidence suggests that many of their ritualistic fertility dances share similar moves to modern day belly dancing. But despite this ancient link, most people agree that it was the gypsies that turned belly dancing into a form of public entertainment and as a result of their migration from India into several different countries, they created various styles of belly dance. In 1453, in Turkey's newly titled city Istanbul, the gypsies provided entertainment in the form of female dancing and the style that they created, which includes the use of complex hip movements and shimmies, can be seen as a basis for many of the movements in belly dancing today. For a while in Turkey, this form of dance was popular. Even dancing troops called Cengiz were created. But severe economic collapse and modernization meant that by the end of the 19th century, it had all but died out. In Turkey today, Cengiz dancing has become known as belly dancing and is mostly used as a tourist attraction. 
When the gypsies migrated into Egypt, their style of dancing became known as the Gawazi and included improvised performances with veils, sticks, swords and candles. Although for a time they were allowed to dance in public, by 1834, because of a religious outcry, it was banned in the city of Cairo. At some point between 1849 and 1856, the ban was lifted and dancing was resumed in private music hall environments. It was when this happened that the exotic Egyptian cabaret-type dancing was born, which at the turn of the century became known as a style of belly dancing. Soon, because of the influx of travellers to the Middle East, dance troops received offers to perform their belly dancing in countries throughout Europe and in America. Their art was praised for its unique excitement, but at the same time was condemned as being scandalous. Belly dancing's popularity continued to grow, even under close public scrutiny, and in 1893, at the Chicago World Fair, people fell in love with a belly dancer named Little Egypt. However, because of her overwhelming popularity, people tried to imitate her pelvic and torso-focused dancing, but their exaggerated attempts did belly dancing something of a disservice, and it became synonymous with vulgarity. This distorted image until recent years was a popular subject for films, books and art. But by combining the ancient and the modern dance styles, belly dancers have been able to shake off this rather salacious image and return to its exotic and feminine roots, making the dance more appealing to women of all ages and backgrounds. Even though through the ages, belly dance styles such as Turkish, Egyptian and modern world beat have been created, all true belly dance styles are based on the same classic foundation movements, which is where this programme will really help you to get to grips with this wonderful way to enhance your health and well-being. As you begin to belly dance, it's important that you create a positive dance environment. So if you're at home, find a large space with no restrictions. However, this is only one option. If you prefer, you could practice in a professional studio, which has a varnished hardwood floor and no obstacles. Ideally, you should also have a large mirror in front of you so that you can watch yourself as you learn the movements. But that can always come later if you find belly dancing suits you. To help create a soothing and mysterious atmosphere, you may want to use scented candles, either on candlesticks or in bowls. Some dancers even use burnt patchouli or incense sticks as they believe that it helps to create a spiritual dance space. Should this be your first attempt at belly dancing, you might well be wondering about what music to play and which clothes to wear. The most common form of music that belly dancers choose is the music of the Middle East, and when it comes to the proper dress, there are no rules. Just try to make sure that you wear something that doesn't restrict your movements, and if you feel comfortable to do so, wear a top that exposes your midriff. If you want to look the part, you can tie a gypsy-style shawl or silk scarf tightly around your hips. Now, without further preamble, it's time to embrace the magic of the dance and introduce you to Mia, who will show you how to belly dance in style.
That was indeed an inspirational start. And if you begin with the basic moves, which Mia will demonstrate, you'll soon be able to put together a belly dance routine of your own. However, before even moving a muscle, you need to relax. And the best way to do this is with breathing exercises to prepare both mind and body for action. It really is very important to prepare properly and as with any form of physical exercise, it's essential if you have any concerns about your health to discuss your attention to belly dance with your GP before beginning. Also, make sure that you only do movements that you are comfortable with. In belly dancing, you should not feel muscle strain or discomfort so know your limitations and don't push beyond what you're capable of. Just like any dancing, when you belly dance, you need to move in time with the music. With the Middle Eastern music that's associated with this type of dance, the best way to keep in time with the rhythm of the drum is to learn a simple eight beat count. To do this, identify the drum and count out loud from one to eight with the beat. If you're having trouble finding the beat, start marching to it. Simply step left to right, tapping each foot every time that you hear the sound of the drum. When you've got the hang of it, instead of counting out loud, try counting in your head and remember, even the best belly dancers probably still use the counting technique. When you'll be shown how to do the steps and moves, some will be given a count or set of counts that'll have a total of eight beats. So make sure that you're able to find the beat and count along with it before you go any further. To begin at the beginning, the first thing that you'll need to know is the foundation stance, as this is how you will need to position yourself before you can learn how to perform basic belly dance moves. Start by standing with your feet about hip width apart and parallel, with your knees unlocked. Make sure that your spine is straight and gently slide your shoulders back. Then flex your stomach muscles until your stomach is lifted and you can feel tightness in your lower abdomen. Once you've done this, raise your arms at your sides until your hands are about chest level, making sure that they are slightly bent at the elbow and the wrists are slightly raised. Next, bend your knees just a tiny bit and slide your left foot about 15 centimetres forward. Then rise up onto the ball of that foot so that you're arching your heel sharply upward. Make sure that you've distributed the weight correctly with about 70% of your weight on your back leg and only 30% on the front. As well as the foundation starts, you need to know about the two fundamental hand positions and both of them will help you to learn how to hold your hands elegantly. The first is called the basic hand and to do this, make sure your palm is facing downwards and whilst keeping your wrist arched, straighten your hand until it's tense. Hold it for a few moments, then relax it a little and slightly raise your little and forefinger while lowering your thumb and middle finger. The second is called the offering hand and unlike the first one, turn your hand over so that the palm is facing upwards. 
Starting with your little finger, allow the fingers to curl up very slightly while making sure that you keep your forefinger straight. Now you're ready to begin, but it's very important that you make sure that you stretch to warm up before you start any physical activity, and belly dancing is certainly no exception. For this type of dance activity, you need to focus on several different areas, so make sure that you do neck, hip releasing, back releasing, waist releasing and hamstring stretches. As long as you do this to warm up, you should manage to avoid injury as well as any muscle soreness. And of course, if you stretch daily, you should also improve your flexibility, which in turn will improve your dancing. Hip movements are very important in the art of belly dancing and the first move that we're going to look at is the hip drop because it'll teach you how to move and isolate your hips. First ensure that you're in the foundation stance which was demonstrated in the previous step and lift your left hip slowly by constricting the muscles that run down the left side of your abdomen. When you're doing this, make sure that you only lift up your hip and nothing else. At the same time, try to keep your head steady by allowing your left knee to bend slightly and your right to straighten a little. As you're raising your hip, count for one, two, and on the third and fourth beat, Drop it sharply so that it's lower than its original position in the foundation stance. Make sure that you emphasise the downward motion. To do it for the right hip, repeat the same technique. Hip lifts are a variation of what you've just done, but rather than accentuating the downward or the dropping motion of the hips, this emphasises the upward motion. Lift up your hip with a jerk and when you count three, four, slowly release your hip back down to its original position. Keep practising these two moves and speed it up so that it only takes one count to lift your hip and one count to drop it. Once you're confidently able to perform the hip drop and lift move, it's on to the hip snaps and thrusts. To perform the left and right hip snap, bend your supporting leg about seven and a half centimetres more than usual. Next, in one quick movement, bend your right leg down while straightening your left slightly and sharply snapping your left hip out to the left. Once you've done this, quickly bend your left leg and straighten your right while sharply snapping your right hip out to the right. To do hip snaps to the front and back, bend your knees a little and use a small fast snap by tightening your stomach muscles to move your pelvis out a little to the front. To snap to the back, arch your spine and push your pelvis back. Each snap should take one count, but while you're learning how to do it, you probably won't be able to do it that fast. The hip thrust is only slightly more difficult, so step about 60 centimetres to the right with your right foot and place 70% of your weight on your supporting leg. Next, thrust your right hip sharply up and out in one count and then slowly bring it back in for another count. After you've done this, pull your right leg back and step out with your left foot. 
Lift the heel of this foot whilst thrusting your hip out to the left all in one count. Remember, unlike the hip drops and lifts, this move should be danced to two counts, one in and one out, unless the music is exceptionally fast. If you want to add detail, you could switch your hand position from the basic to the offering one when you perform the thrusting motion. Although the next hip movement, hip rolls, draws attention to your hips, it's your leg strength and footwork that are important. For the first count, step out to the right so that your feet are flat on the ground and are shoulder width apart. Push out as far as you can to the right and bend your knees slightly, making sure that about 70% of your weight is distributed onto your right leg. For the second count, you need to lift your hip. For the third count, roll your hips from left to right in one movement whilst making sure that you flex your knees naturally so that it's a smooth motion. Once you've rolled to the left, release the tightened muscles and lower your right foot. This is now the perfect starting point for the left hip roll and to practice it, just repeat the same routine but with your left hip. After practicing, you should be able to speed up to two or even one count per roll. The best way to learn how to do large hip circles is to break the move into four easy steps. Begin by pushing the hips out to the right as far as possible and do this for two counts. Then, for another two counts, slowly round your hips forward whilst making sure that you lean back so that your spine is straight. Next, and again for another two counts, push out your hips to the left as far as possible. Lastly, finish with a forward lean, ensuring that your back is straight for the concluding two counts. With some practice, you should be able to perform this faster and much more smoothly. The final movements in this section are the hip twists, which can either be danced on the spot or used as a walk. On the first count, gently step forward onto your left foot whilst twisting your left hip sharply forward and round to the right. Then twist your hip back to its original position and elegantly lift your foot off the floor with a small kick and return it again before moving on to a back hip twist using a gentle push. Once you've done this, snap your hip back sharply and use this force to kick your foot off the floor before putting it back down again. If you want to twist your right hip, use the same routine and after a while you should be able to do the twist in only one count. To do the hip twist walk, you need to perform the full left hip twist, but instead of placing your foot back on the floor after you've done the gentle kick, take a large step of about 30 centimetres forward and ensure that your toes are slightly pointing to the left. When you've done this, immediately step forward with your right foot and perform a right hip twist. And just like you did with your left foot, after the small kick, take a large step forward and simply repeat the routine.
Now that you've completed all of the hip movements, you can go on to the next stage, which focuses on movements that involve the rest of the body. The first of these moves is called the Body Intense Shimmy and is one of the most recognised moves in belly dancing. It's also one of the oldest, as the shimmy motion, just like the hip movements, was used by the early pagan cultures in their dances of fertility. Select some music with a fast tempo and get into the foundation stance, but change it slightly by placing your feet side by side and flat on the floor whilst relaxing your knees. Take a few deep breaths and remember to breathe evenly whilst you perform the move. Next, bend your right knee, making sure that your left is not locked and when you do this, your left hip should lift a little. Then return your right knee to its original position without straightening it. Repeat the routine with your left knee and once you can do this, alternate between the left and the right and speed up. When you reach the point where you can go no faster, this is now the shimmy. To make the move even more fun, why not add a coin belt around your hips? And now we come to the belly roll and for this you need to imagine your stomach as a ferris wheel as you take some deep breaths in and out. Moving on, relax your belly and tighten the lower abdominal muscles. Next, gradually release them while simultaneously tightening the upper ones. As soon as the upper abs tighten fully, totally relax your lower ones. Finally, flex your lower abs while relaxing the upper ones and repeat the series again. Make sure that you can do this successfully at least four times before you move on to the undulations. Just like the shimmy, the undulation is very sensual. It's also a move that'll take a lot of practice and patience and will be easier to learn if you watch yourself in a full length mirror. Begin by getting into the foundation stance, but instead of facing forward, move your body so that you're at a 45 degree angle. Thrust your chest as far forward as you can and arch your upper spine as well as pushing your shoulders back. While keeping the arch strong, release your lower back and push your hips back, making sure that you extend your body towards the ceiling. Once you've done this, start to lean back, ensuring that you support your lower spine by tucking your pelvis up and in. With your knees slightly bent, continue to lean back, but be careful not to strain your spine or abdominal muscles. Next, curl in your chest and roll your upper body forward so that you're almost crouched into a reverse C. To finish the move, arch out your chest and push your hips back until you rise and reach your beginning position. After a lot of practice, you should be able to perform this move smoothly and to a total of eight counts, but if you feel confident, you could try varying the speed.
Hopefully, you shouldn't find the next move, the chest thrust, quite so tricky to learn. To do chest thrusts from side to side, keep your hips directly over your legs and your shoulders relaxed. Then, with your hips and legs remaining absolutely still, thrust your chest as far to the right as you can. Return to the centre and do the same to the left. If you're doing it correctly, it should look like the top and bottom halves of your body are working independently. To chest thrust to the front and back, just repeat the same routine. But when you thrust to the front, arch your spine. And when you thrust to the back, roll your shoulders forward and curve your back. There is something really beautiful about the figure of eight movement that Mia is now demonstrating and the more practice you get, the more fluid this will become. Circling the hips in a figure of eight is equally as sensuous as the other moves we have been looking at and unlike some of the rather complex back bends you may find in more advanced belly dancing demonstrations, it's much safer to perform because there is no direct strain on the back. Although the overall impression is without doubt spectacular, Mia is actually keeping her hip movements small and very contained and precisely over the appropriate foot. By now you should be realising that all of these moves can be pieced together to suit your own choreography. The cobra neck sliver is another move that is unique to belly dancing. To do it, raise your arms above your head and firmly press your shoulders down. Place your palms together and bend your elbows at a 45 degree angle. Then simply move your head from left to right by using your neck muscles. Don't just tilt it. The more you practice, the faster you'll be able to do it. To begin with, you might find it easier to get the idea of this move by practicing with your thumbs either side of your face. Also remember that much of what you do in belly dancing is all about expression and the shoulders can be the key to an attractive performance whilst making the dancer feel great as well. Here's another lovely move, known as snake arms, that is both sensuous and enticing. To begin, stand with your feet flat on the floor, arms at your sides and your palms facing inward. Lift up your right arm making sure that the elbow is slightly bent and roll your shoulder forward so that it's also pointing upwards. Raise your arm so that it's just above shoulder height and beginning with your wrist, lift up your hand. As your hand continues to lift, rotate your elbow to point down. 
Next, gently bend your fingers and turn your palm out whilst lowering your arm to your side. Do exactly the same thing for your other arm. To alternate between the right and left arm, bring up your right arm and follow the same technique. As you start to drop your right arm, begin the technique with your left arm. Just remember that each arm should be slowly working in the opposite direction to the other. It's great fun, but don't worry if it takes you a little time to master it. Hand movements are usually the last skills that need to be mastered by a novice belly dancer and the hand movements should always be made subtly so that you don't draw away attention from the more significant dance areas. The circling hand is positively captivating and begins from the basic hand position. Then drop your wrist and stiffen your fingers whilst turning your hand counterclockwise in a full circle until your hand is now in the offering position. From this position, straighten your wrist and gently curl your fingers whilst rotating it back to the original starting position. Try and imagine dusting the inside of a delicate vase with a slender neck and you should get the idea. Just watching Mia performing an alternative hand move is pretty self-explanatory and this is one she describes as painting hands. It's beautifully fluid and certainly enhances any other body movements rather than detracting from them. Attention to detail is of crucial importance and with the choice of hand movements to work with, we can now turn to the feet and there are basically two stances. The flat foot stance is exactly as it sounds as both feet are flat on the floor, but to get into the releve stance, arch your heels so that the balls of your feet support you. Basically, this means stand on tiptoe. Once you know how to place your feet, it's time to simply put one foot in front of the other. The basic walk is one of the easiest and classiest ways of making an entrance. To do it, simply stand with your arms by your sides and with your feet parallel to one another. Then lift up your right foot and step forward, but place your toes on the floor first. Repeat with the left foot and continue to walk, making sure that your head doesn't bob up and down. If you want to add detail, you can combine it with snake arms or any other arm movement of your choice. There are many different ways of making an entrance in belly dancing and Mia, as an experienced exponent of the art form, has a number of alternatives that she can share with us. This lovely fluid walk uses a lift and drop movement that not only gets her from one point on the dance floor to another, but also sets the mood and is packed full of expression to enhance her performance. Some walks are more traditional and the Indy cross step can be traced back to Indian gods and goddesses as it was believed that they moved using a cross step. 
As it has two full moves, it can either be performed using two counts, one for each move, or four counts. To start it, bend your right leg at the knee and with your toes pointed, lift it up to the side so that it's directly under your right arm. Then swing it over to the left and step as far across your body as you can. Once you've done this, transfer your weight onto the right leg by leaning forward slightly. To walk forward, lift your left leg out to the side and bring it over the right. Then step as far to the right as you can and put your foot down whilst transferring your weight to that foot. Then just repeat the whole process. The last walk that we're going to look at is the fast moving Gawazi slide and as you can probably tell by its name, it's a move that was used by the Egyptian Gawazi gypsy dancers back in the 19th century. For the first count, lift up your right leg, step forward by about 60 centimetres and shift your body weight onto your right foot. For the second count, slide your left foot forward until it's only about 10 centimetres behind the heel of the right one. For the final count, shift your weight to the back foot and step forward again with your right. Mia again has her own take on this traditional movement, adding a more folkloric feel to the walk. As you progress with belly dancing, you will undoubtedly want to add turns to your repertoire of moves. But do bear in mind that these can be quite difficult to execute and need an awful lot of practice. This first turn that Mia is demonstrating is known as a dervish turn and is named in honour of the whirling dervishes who spin as part of a religious ceremony at very high speed. Mia has had a lot of practice, but when you try this, you can always begin slowly and then build up your speed as you get more experienced. But it will inevitably make you feel a bit dizzy because with the head movements, you will not be able to spot this turn. With the spinning barrel turn, which Mia is now demonstrating, it's much easier to spot so as not to become dizzy. To do this, focus on a single point in front of you. Turn as far round as you can without removing your eyes. When you can't turn any further, spin your head to look over the other shoulder. Spot, or if you prefer, locate the original point focused upon until the body catches up. It really does work and with this barrel turn, it's quite easy to do. Surprising as it may sound, you now have an adequate range of belly dance movements to get started. What you now need to do is layer the moves together to form a dance, and this is where the fun really begins. No matter how easy and spontaneous Mia makes it look, the basic moves underpin everything that she does. And of course, just like a spin, you need to think about how to come to an attractively pleasing halt. So here are a few options that you might like to consider. When you've familiarised yourself with the basic belly dance moves and have started to create your own dance routines, you may find it very useful to join a belly dance class in your local area. 
It's great fun to dance with others, and as belly dancing becomes ever more popular, you should be able to find a class to suit you without too much difficulty. However, as our introduction to belly dancing draws to a close, there is another aspect of this tantalising art form that you may like to consider. Belly dancing is synonymous with veils, and as your skill level increases, you may enjoy adding a veil to your routines. You can use your veil to cover the body and then reveal whichever part you choose, and this technique is called body glimpsing. Many belly dancers also use a lifting and cascading movement to create mystery, and it's very effective indeed. The possibilities are in fact endless, ranging from creating the impression of a sandstorm to transforming a veil into butterfly wings. The scope is literally as wide open as your imagination, so why not let the dance inspire you to give the veil a try? Another charming addition to the belly dancer's repertoire can be the finger symbols, or zills, as they're often called. You need two sets, one for each hand, attached by elastic to the thumb and middle finger. At first, just building up the rhythm can be a little tricky, but with practice you'll soon get the hang of it. Only then can you begin to dance to the music of the zills. Far from being a prop for belly dancers to use, remember that the finger cymbals are a musical instrument, and as such you will need to learn how to play them properly before incorporating them into your belly dance routines. It's great when you're learning a new skill to get a taste of what you can aspire to, and Mia's next demonstration truly falls into the aspirational category. Sword dancing is perhaps the most dramatic of all the techniques that belly dancers use, and as you progress, this is something you can take classes to become proficient at. Placing the sword on your head takes a great deal of poise and balance. But don't worry, when you begin, only a totally blunt practice sword is used. Keeping your head still is the key to pulling off this move. But if you think this is clever stuff, just look at Mia's floor work. This appears to be graceful and effortless but it does take a great deal of practice to get to this level. But once you've been bitten by the belly dancing bug, who knows where it might take you? As you become more experienced at belly dancing, you will probably find that you would like to perform in front of an audience. If you have joined a class, this can be much easier to do, as you can dance with others for moral support. But starting off by dancing for friends and family can be equally as rewarding, and help you to build your confidence. When you begin belly dancing, the main criteria for clothing is that it's comfortable and allows maximum movement. But when you want to perform, it's a different matter entirely. Belly dance costumes are beautiful and whether you buy your clothes or make your own, you can adapt an outfit to suit any size or shape. An intricately beaded and tasseled bra and belt set is draped over loose skirts or if you prefer harem pants and the effect is both exotic and feminine. When it comes to colours and fabrics, the world of belly dancing is truly your oyster. And of course, you can choose a whole range of veils to coordinate or contrast with your chosen outfits. Other accessories will add to the atmosphere, 
so look out for suitable Eastern style bracelets, necklaces, rings, earrings, armbands, anklets, toe rings, and if you're brave enough, belly rings. The belly dancer's facial expression is all important and particularly the eyes need to be enticing and alluring. Makeup technique can be very helpful here with more exaggerated eyeliner helping to enhance the mysterious nature of the dance. Generally speaking, stronger colours work very well and heavily cold eyes with darkened arched eyebrows are a must. Adhesive jewels can be fun and body glitter will always produce that extra bit of sparkle. Just one tip though from the more experienced belly dancers, always go for waterproof cosmetics. They won't run when you sweat because despite the illusion of cool, sultry sophistication, this will happen. Now you have everything you need to start belly dancing, whether simply for your own pleasure or for performance. If you choose not to join a class, try and get to watch other belly dancers in action to see firsthand how a routine of all the moves we have explored in this program are put together. The wonderful location, which has been featured throughout, is actually Darbuka, a very evocative world music bar in London, where guests can enjoy music and belly dancing in an authentic atmosphere. It's well worth searching out such places because you can be assured that the belly dancing is going to be of a high standard. It's worth mentioning here that there is a belly dancing etiquette that might be helpful to you, particularly as at the outset, friends and family may raise concerns about the sleazier reputation that belly dancing sometimes has. This couldn't be further from the truth and how you carry yourself in the dance will soon dispel any worries that they might have. A true belly dancer, whether keen amateur or seasoned professional, will always behave with ladylike elegance and dignity. She will never dance for an all-male audience, allow money to be tucked into her costumes or collect tips thrown on the floor. Equally as important, she will also know the history of the dance so that she can re-educate wherever misconceptions arise. And sadly, that really does bring us to the end of this belly dancing programme. Hopefully your appetite for this wonderful art form will have been whetted and you'll be inspired to give belly dancing a try. There is no age limit, no weight restriction and no cultural barrier to cross. Belly dancing celebrates the true essence of being female and for those who have already discovered the health-promoting benefits of this great pastime, it has become a way of life rather than just a pleasant hobby. Positive self-image, self-confidence and self-fulfillment are all most definitely on offer through belly dancing, improving women's lives all over the world, quite literally from the cradle to the grave. But no amount of words can express the true beauty of belly dancing, so sit back, relax and take a few moments to enjoy, uninterrupted, one of Mia's lovely dance routines, providing entertainment and inspiration for would-be belly dancers everywhere. <laughs>